ICT, information communication technologies that includes computers, the internet, mobile phones and satellites, have become powerful tools for communication and it's created a new information society. These are tools to reduce poverty, empower people, and generally improve the quality of life. The development of ICTs in Africa faces many challenges. Content creation, capacity building, and telecommunications infrastructure development must be strengthened. Good policies must be put in place to regulate the industry. Governments must be willing to put themselves under scrutiny of its citizens to make their work more efficient. And people have to be educated and trained to enable them to enter the information society. We examine the different approaches for using ICT for development in four African countries. Ghana, where the government has completed their national e-strategy policy opening the way for private investors to come in and develop ICTs in a deregulated environment. Uganda is amongst the first group of African countries to liberalize the telecommunications market. A number of initiatives and a lot of pilot projects are taking place to enable ICTs to improve health, education, and to make them relevant in people's lives. Rwanda demonstrates how, with the right mixture of political will and determination at the highest level, even a small, less endowed country can make some ICT strides. We have been working with the government to be able to train manpower of all sorts. Technicians for networking, technicians for hardware maintenance will be able to manipulate and maintain the computers, and the technicians for software management. The government is putting up computers in uh, primary schools and uh, in secondary schools. Uh, we need uh, to train the teachers to be able to, to train, you know, to, 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 to teach using computers. ICT, it is better to see it as a, a, a key uh, enabling tool for social economic uh, development. Uh, it has uh, value it adds to different activities in the social economic development process, uh, be it in the public or in the private sectors. And therefore, we think it is very central, and uh, every sector benefits from that. So that's why we have chosen uh, to go along that route. Africa has missed many chances. It missed the agricultural revolution miss the industrial revolution, it cannot afford to miss the information revolution. All African countries are capable of joining the information world because there are many people and the information revolution is based on people. So the most important thing is training. Once we build human capacity, we'll be able to get people to participate in the information society. Ethiopia is in transition. A lot of changes are going on to achieve its national development goals, and the country is investing heavily in the ICT sector. Telecom is the basis for the ICT sector, but there is still a monopoly in the telecommunications market. Global business and ICT go hand in hand. It is essential for African businesses to be an active player in this global economic market. Small and medium-sized enterprises that advertise on the internet have an unprecedented opportunity to promote their products around the world. Like this manufacturer of genuine leather craft work in Addis Ababa. It's going to promote export products in the conventional way is a very difficult job. In the first place, for every product you want to promote on, uh, on the traditional way, you will have to have a catalog, you will have to participate in trade fairs, you will have to take your products physically from place to place and show it to people that come to where you are to see it. But in e-commerce, you don't have to do that. You publish your website, you have your products placed on your website and make it available for virtual shoppers around the world 24 hours a day. And so Africa can easily reach the entire world pro of promoting its products on the internet. Content creation, information on health and education in a language that they can understand, 
Business and partnership with the private sectors and the civil society are important ingredients to expand access to the underserved population. Good telecommunication infrastructure is one of the tools to enable people, especially those in the rural areas, to access information. Ghana has a very dynamic private sector. It's a challenge for the government to harmonize its policies for ICTs to develop it throughout the country. We, we have always felt that the benefits of ICT should not be limited to those of us who live in the, in the cities. And we've always felt that we should be able to carry the whole country along uh, with us. One group of people that was targeted uh, to be trained uh, in the use of computer and, and the internet uh, was the chiefs in the rural areas. The chiefs were brought together, they were trained in the use, basic use of the computer and basic use of the internet. They got so excited about it and they have helped considerably in spreading the message uh, to their people. In most of the rural areas, uh, they do exercise considerable amount of power and when they get convinced that there are benefits that go with it, uh, it helps a whole lot in propagating the benefits of uh, ICT. Technology is being used to improve healthcare, particularly in the rural areas. Up till now, doctors in outlying areas have had to rely on their own skills and knowledge to treat patients. In the last one year we have been uh, using uh, and we have introduced handheld computers among healthcare providers in two districts. So we're able to provide them up-to-date relevant medical content on the common health problems for which the many of the patients come to the health clinics. So they're able to generally treat better the people and then by using the handheld computers for data collection, it relieves their time uh, from the manual processes and they're able to give more time to the treatment of their, of their patients. Rwanda is perhaps one of the best examples in Africa where leadership is key. Its president, Paul Kagame, has had a visionary role in terms of how Rwanda's information society should evolve. Education is central in this plan. Uh, Rwanda would like to be in, have a, to be a middle income country in the year 2020. Uh, we like also to have uh, a knowledge-based economy. So with that in mind, we believe that uh, information communication technology uh, and uh, science uh, in, the general, in general, science and technology is going to help us in order to reach uh, that goal. So if we concentrate on the education of these children, in particular in science and technology, and also in human rights issues and peace education, because we believe that uh, investing in education is a key. In 1994, in Rwanda, an estimated 800,000 Tutsis and moderate Hutus were killed in the genocide. The country's jails are still crammed with around 100,000 suspects who are still awaiting trial. It would take more than a century to try all the cases. Rwanda has chosen to use its traditional justice system called gachacha to try the suspects. Before the system, all the packets used the way of uh, bringing the reports by vehicles, but now we have uh, a connection with the internet and they have to use uh, that link to send all the reports and all the information from there to the Ministry of Duchess and to the office of the general prosecutor here in Chigali. Africa is very dependent on world trade. The global trading system depends on information communication systems. So, if Africa lags behind, then it's going to affect how it interacts with the rest of the world.